in the morning when I'm making my coffee Tom comes in here and I give him a little bowl of cream and he has coffee with me in the mornings watch Tom Jump into the dryer. Yeah, let him. I'll turn it on. Look at all that. Look at all that lint. It is a lot of lint. What are you doing? Get out of the dryer. Woo! Head, head. Get out, butthead. Don't call him name. Get out of the dryer. Get out! Hey, this is not some place for you to hide. Get out of there. Get out, you goofball. So occasionally, well, just about every day, Maria vacuums off the screens that cover the exhaust fans in the bathroom and the kitchen. But occasionally, we have to take the uh, screen off and the fan off and clean the whole thing up in there because here in the desert, it gets really dirty. Amazingly dirty. So uh, take the fan off and all that takes is you know one of these little allen keys and uh, clean everything up in there as best you can put it all back on and uh, it not only looks better but it also uh, believe it or not the uh, the fan runs quieter when the screen is clean you don't hear all that rush of air, all you know, constant rush of air going through the screen as much. And it's safer than doing than going on the roof. Yeah, and it's safer than going on the roof and trying to clean all this stuff. So it's not that's perfect, another. Perfect, but it's good enough for retired government work. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. I don't know if any of you guys uh, do it on your own, um, but if you go to um, a salon or some place. Um, get your legs waxed, even half a leg, it's going to cost you $30, $40 a pot. This kit cost, um, I think it was uh, $50, $55 from Sally's, and um, you can probably get it cheaper online, and, and just do it yourself. So, I have to do it myself because I can't, I can't use a razor. I have eczema and, uh, on my legs, and uh, for whatever reason, using a razor um, makes it flare up. Um, so, anyways, um, I got to plug this in, and it'll be plugged in for about 30 minutes before. Okay, I so I got everything ready, and 
I do this in the shower, um, only because um, um, this this wax is uh, it can get all over everything. It's easier for me to scrub the shower down, and um, it's ready, I think. What are you doing? Reading? Yep. What are you reading? Dean Coons. Dean Coons. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Final episode of um, Odd Thomas novels. See? Uh huh. It's the final one. I think it's the final one. Who are you talking to? Cindy. Cindy here in the RV park down there? We lived in a neighborhood in California for over 10 years and you never spoke to a single person, not even the next door frickin' neighbor. We've been in RV Park only since October. It's December and you're talking on the phone at 9 o'clock at night to another lady in the RV Park. Oh. Okay, that's amazing. That's pretty amazing. Hey, so I wanted to show you something um, that I learned uh, back in the summer uh, and it's definitely uh, was an issue on this motorhome it's probably an issue on all motorhomes uh, you know how uh, I know a lot of you are dealing with the cold weather right now and uh, you know how you have those um, sometimes it seems like it gets really hot when you turn the heater on and you come over and you look at your thermostat and it's hotter in your coach than the thermostat says and they, so the heat just keeps running or vice versa, however it works for you. Uh, what I wanted to show you is, like on, on our motorhome, behind this wall on the other side is the shower, okay? So uh, the shower head is about right here on the other side of this wall. The uh, faucet and all that is about right here. So we know for sure that there's plumbing behind this wall. And if you come over here, you can see that um, you have all the power panel and everything on this side of the wall so we know that we got a bunch of wire and everything going down and if you uh, down by the uh, floor we have uh, three inch pipe that is bringing uh, you know for the furnace for the heater so we know that that's uh, behind this wall uh, so what we found is you remember back uh, when I installed the uh, composting toilet in the site sear, for those of you who have been with us that long, you remember there was a hole going through the floor where all the plumbing and everything went through down into the basement. And when I put everything back together, I insulated that hole because I didn't want that cold air coming up into the coach. Well, what I think in most RVs is the same thing is happening here. You've got all this wiring and plumbing and everything behind this wall and somewhere it goes through the floor down into the basement and uh, it's not insulated or, or you know closed up around those uh, pipes and wires and that cold air comes up into the wall the wiring coming into the back of the uh, thermostat goes through a hole in this wood and it's just open to the inside of that wall so what I think happens is the cold air hits the back of this thermostat and that affects the reading on the thermostat okay right here in, for example in winter right here the thermostat is going to read a cooler temperature than the coach actually is if you <clears throat> follow what I'm saying so here's what I did that uh, seems to have fixed it for us maybe it'll fix it for you as well I took the thermostat off the wall I put insulation in the hole then I cut a piece of reflectix you know that uh, silver bubble wrap uh, insulation to fit behind the thermostat, put a little hole through it, put all the wires through the little hole, and remounted the thermostat with that behind it. And it seems to help uh, to have helped us a lot. Maybe it'll help you also. Hope it does.